happy how it goes now with a uh, uh, little tweaking of uh, technology here. Uh, if you will turn to your uh, Living with Christ or your Word Among Us, let us begin today's Mass with the entrance antiphon. O God, when you went forth before your people, marching with them and living among them, the earth trembled and heavens poured down rain. Alleluia. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O God, who for the salvation of the world brought about the paschal sacrifice, be favorable to the supplications of your people, so that Christ, our high priest, interceding on our behalf, may be uh, may by his likeness to ourselves bring us reconciliation, and by his uh, equality with you free us from our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them, We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have, uh, and yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring the man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, uh, though you had uh, him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see the good, uh, how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them. And from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears, uh, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, who, uh, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You believe me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen but still believe. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard. 
but no one uh, accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy for the one whom God has uh, uh, sent speaks the word of God. He does not ration his gift of the spirit. The father loves the son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. I would like to have you think about something. We're going to be talking about it more this weekend as well, but uh, beginning to give you a, a little taste of, of something to meditate upon. What is it that we are celebrating with uh, Easter? Uh, and of course, I want to refer you to uh, how Jesus acted uh, uh, in the world. He was able to do signs, miracles, as I've uh, said so many times before, to prove that he is from God. He's you know, able to do things that only God can do. We see that with the uh, Sanhedrin. Uh, they are realizing, the wise ones realize what the apostles, when they are able to cure somebody, realize that, that these men, these apostles, are are very special individuals. They are able to do miracles. They're able to do signs that gives them the bona fides, the, the credentials of being able to speak on God's behalf. So what I would like you to think about now is what Jesus did when he was amongst us. He was able to raise people from the dead. That was a pretty incredible thing. See, we have recorded that in the New Testament over and over again. But the thing I have to ask you is what happened to those individuals that Jesus rose from the dead. Well, didn't they die in the end? Didn't they die? And as a result, we have to con consider ourselves uh, in, in that light. Well, what did Jesus do? Act as a prophet? How, how was he, in fact, really above even the prophets, the prophets of other prophets? And Jesus did something quite remarkable. And that's what we really celebrate in today's uh, uh, Easter celebration and what we're kind of getting a hint of in today's gospel as well is that when Jesus rose himself from the dead, that was pretty incredible all by itself, but he never, ever was subject to death again. He was able to conquer even death itself. Those are people that he was able to rise from the uh, raise from the dead. They died in the end, but Jesus never did die. He is able now to give life, and that's what we see in today's uh, gospel. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son does not and does not will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. We do know in confidence as Christians that our, our goal is to be able to share eternal life with God in the promise that Jesus has conquered death. Death will never ever touch him again. And then in that, we will know that in that hope, we have eternal life where when we die and then are able to be raised and, and then our, our bodies reunited with our, our, our souls, that we can enter eternal life just like Jesus, never, ever having to worry about death again. That is the Easter mystery that we share. In so to that, now we will stand together in that hope. And then realizing that even death cannot uh, uh, destroy anything that we uh, uh, are involved as Christians. Now we can turn to God, the giver of life, and present to him our petitions, our supplications, and most importantly, our thanksgivings. So let us pray always for the civic leaders that are in our, in our world today as they are trying to face this uh, coronavirus. We, we pray that those uh, individuals who are entrusted with a common good will always look as, to Jesus as their role model, the servant of the servants. And now we ask that, Heavenly Father, that you send your Holy Spirit to be with these individuals, that they may serve the common good according to your will and serve it well. We pray to the Lord. And we also now, as this Mass is being offered for the peoples of our parishes, uh, we want to pray for all those individuals that are that are uh, suffering from any uh, difficulties, especially health issues, or being a little uh, even uh, despondent because of what is going on. Heavenly Father, for, for our, our parishioners, may they find strength in you and, and be able to find hope and renewal as we celebrate this Easter season. We pray to the Lord. Lord. 
prayer. Now, Heavenly Father, we turn to you and present you those individuals who serve the church. Uh, we pray for uh, Bishop uh, Donald uh, as he is uh, trying to put all these uh, different things together as he's now uh, entering in a new phase of his life. We pray for uh, Pope Francis and all the successors of the apostles, that your Holy Spirit will be upon them as they go through this difficult time that our world is facing. We pray to the Lord. And now, Heavenly Father, we present you those individuals amongst us who are suffering because of the coronavirus uh, and their families as they do struggle trying to overcome something that is so invisible and yet is able to, to destroy the, the very life that you have given to us. Heavenly Father, be with these individuals to give them the courage. And yes, we pray for their quick recovery, and that they may also come through this knowing uh, that you are the Lord of Lords and the conqueror of all things. We pray to the Lord. And now, Heavenly Father, we turn to you and present to you those individuals who have gone before us, marked with a sign of faith. We, in particular, remember those of the, our parish families who, who have gone in, in a, to their rest. May they share the promise of a Christ, eternal uh, life and resurrection and promise of, of eternal glory with the Father and you in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Now, Heavenly Father, we present to you those petitions that we hold dearest to our own hearts, knowing that we are never abandoned, but even in the silence, will you hear us when we call out to you? For all of these, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, it is with great joy that we are here today to give you praise and worship. Hear these petitions, therefore, as we show our faith and trust in you. For indeed, we present them to you through our Lord, our Master, our President, our Prime Minister, or whatever word that we can understand as our true ruler. For we know he lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit is one God forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers raise, arise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But at this time, above all, to allow you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. 
therefore overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to have us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and uh, Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, uh, uh, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
again, if you take out your uh, word among us or your uh, living with Christ, your Magnificat, let us say together the communion antiphon, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia. And again, in your prayers, do remember, if you will, to pray for the peoples of our parishes from whom we offer this Mass today, this time, knowing that God can conquer all things. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us uh, to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen.